Hi guys and welcome. Today we'll check out the Tribit Stormbox Micro. Once again, Tribit was kind enough to send me over a unit for testing purposes and that's exactly what we're going to do today. Currently you can find it for between 50 to 60 euros on most online stores, which puts it between super cheap micro Bluetooth speakers like the JBL GO or the high-end ones like the FIFA City which go for around $100. In the box you get the typical manuals, a warranty guide, as well as a USB-C charging cable, which is nice to see. Starting with the technical aspects of the speaker, it features one full range driver on the front of the speaker that is coupled to a passive radiator that is located at the back of the speaker. The entire device is fully IPX7 waterproof and features a handy rubber clip at the back which allows you to mount it to all kinds of surfaces. It only has a few buttons, one power button next to the battery and Bluetooth pairing indicator, as well as a pairing button. On the front of the speaker there are three additional buttons that control volume and music playback. Now let's quickly take a look at the frequency response measurement of the speaker. Generally the response is pretty flat and offers some nice bass extension down to roughly 75Hz, which also is the passive radiator's tuning frequency. Today we'll compare the Stormbox Micro against some other speakers in the same size category. Both of them are more expensive than the Tribit, but sound-wise I still think that the comparison is surprisingly fair. The first speaker is my so far favorite small Bluetooth speaker, the Bose Soundlink Micro. Currently you can buy it for around $80 and it has a similar set of features to the Tribit. The next speaker is one of the most expensive speakers in the size category and it's the FIFA City. This one currently retails for at least $120 online and although it's only IPX4 rated, it's the only one here that has two separate drivers for high and low frequencies. I'll be using the same tracks as in my last video about the Tribit Max Sound Plus. As always, I'll be wearing high quality binaural microphones to give you the best sound impression possible. For those types of recordings you'll have to wear headphones though, so make sure to put them up and enjoy the sound comparison. Contrary to the opinion of some other people on YouTube here, I think that this comparison actually is pretty close. I will admit that the Tribit beats the Bose when it comes to maximum loudness and high loudness performance, but on normal volumes like this, the Tribit comes across as a bit too hollow compared to the Bose. The Bose of course isn't a super linear speaker, but overall it also appears to be a bit more refined sounding than the Tribit. 
On the other hand, you should of course keep in mind the minor price difference between those two speakers. Next, let's try the other competitor, the FIFA City, and see how this one compares. Again, I think this comparison is pretty close and this time across almost all loudness levels. So no matter at what volume you play them, the differences between the two aren't huge, which if you think about it, definitely speaks for the much less expensive tribit. But if sound quality is your only priority and you have the money to spend, I'd still give the slight edge to the FIFA City in this comparison. It just again sounds a bit cleaner and refined as well as being more balanced sounding than the Tribit. As a last addition, I have to admit that both the Tribit and the FIFA do not offer any loudness compensation for lower volumes, which means that they don't increase the amplitude of the lower frequencies as the overall volume gets reduced. With both of these, this leads to a rather thin sound on low volumes, which is why I often stick to the Bose because it's the only one here that has loudness compensation built in. In the case of the Tribit, it's still okay considering its low price tag, but when you spend over 120 bucks on something like a FIFA City, loudness is something I would definitely expect. And this last test shows the rather thin performance of the FIFA and the Tribit on low volumes nicely. That's already it from this comparison. Overall I think that the Tribit Stormbox Micro is a pretty good package and a good value overall, although I usually prefer the sound of the others by a margin and it's missing some features like loudness, you also have to consider that it's around half the price of the competition and in this case those flaws are justified in my opinion. In the end, you still have to decide for yourself how much money you want to spend, whether you can live with the slight flaws of the Tribit, or if you want to spend the full money and get the full package with the Bose or the FIFA for example. Overall, this still means that the Tribit does get a buying recommendation from me, because I think that despite 
some of those flaws. Um, the price tag definitely makes up for them and even in comparison to much more expensive speakers, again, like the FIFA City, it stacks up really nicely. If you enjoyed this video, please make sure to leave a like and subscribe to the channel to don't miss out on any future uploads. Until then, stay safe, have a good time and I'll see you in the next one.